In this section, I want to talk about setting up your info panel. The info panel is critical when you want to try to measure the RGB or the CMYK values in your image, and there's better ways to set up that info panel so it can be most useful to you. First of all, let's go ahead and get the info panel. Let's come underneath the window menu and choose info. Notice there's a built-in keyboard shortcut, F8, which, by the way, works throughout all of the creative suite. We'll always bring up the info panel no matter what application that you're in. So we'll choose F8 to bring up info panel. And yours may look exactly like this, or it may look a little bit different depending upon how your default values are currently set up. And this panel, once again, as I mentioned, allows you to measure the RGB and CMYK values. Previously, we talked about what the difference was between an RGB and a CMYK image. Just to review, the RGB image has three grayscale channels, one for the red, one for the green, one for the blue. And then the RGB itself is the composite of the three and displays in color. Whereas the CMYK has four channels, and there are four color values based upon, in this case, the four process colors that will be used in printing. What the info panel allows you to do is measure those values that you see here inside of your image. And we're going to use this when we talk about setting highlights and shadows and doing brightness and contrast. This info panel works directly with the info tool, as you see here. We're going to start off and just talk about the eyedropper tool here. We'll come back and talk about the color sampler tool a little bit later. Notice the keyboard shortcut for accessing this tool is just I. By the way, when I'm working in Photoshop and I go into my general preferences, which is just Command or Control K, I like to turn off this Use Shift key for tool switch so I don't have to hold down my Shift key when I'm actually accessing my tools. So I can just go I if I want to access the eyedropper tool or hit I again if I want to get to one of the other eyedropper tools. All right, so we're going to access the eyedropper tool. And notice that as I move my eyedropper around, my RGB and CMYK values that you have here measure the different values inside of an image. But you don't have to be in your eyedropper tool. I might be in my move tool, like my V tool, and it still measures those values. It's just when you select the eyedropper tool, it's the direct tool that is used to work hand in hand with the info tool. And one of the reasons you might want to go to the eyedropper tool for your initial setup is when you select the eyedropper tool, I, you can come up here and choose your sample size in the options panel. If you don't see this up here, just choose window and come down here and then just choose your options to make sure that the options for that tool come up. And then my suggestion is to choose a 3 by 3 average for most images. Notice there's many other built-in sampling sizes. But you want to stay away from point sample because then you're just measuring one pixel on each of these channels, whether it's RGB in RGB mode or CMYK in CMYK mode. 3x3 three three gives you a more representative sampling of images in a small area. 3x3 three three generally tends to be pretty good. So we'll go to the eyedropper tool. We'll set our sample size at 3x3. Three three, and then over here, you can control what is displayed inside of your info panel. And when you click on the info panel menu, it says panel options. And you can check on the show tool hints. And what the show tool hints shows you is what you see down here. If I turn this off like this and then click OK, then you don't get any more tool hints. If you like the tool hints and you're not quite sure what things are used for, then you can turn that on. All right, typically, I'll turn mine off, as you see here. There's lots of other things you can display here. But typically, I like to keep mine small and pretty lean and mean. When I'm working in a print workflow, I like to have my info panel set up like this. I like to have RGB on one side. And notice that these are all the color spaces that we looked at, remember, underneath the image and mode, all the color spaces here. Any color space that you can choose here, you can also choose underneath the info panel. Well, the two most common color spaces that I work in are RGB for my input or image capture, like a scanner or a digital camera, and then CMYK on output. So I'll put RGB on one side and CMYK on the other. Now, notice a curious thing happens. Is that here we have the Keen Eye Sunrise RGB. And we can see by looking at the channels panel, there's three different channels. But when we move our tool over the image, not only do we get the RGB, but we get the CMYK values as well over here. And when you see CMYK, how is that possible? Well, you might remember this Photoshop Color Settings dialog box we access via the Edit menu that we work with in the sections on concepts and setups, and again in the section on color spaces, color modes, and color conversion, where we set our working RGB and working CMYK profiles. Let's zoom into the top of this dialog box to the working spaces section. And this is where we assigned our working spaces RGB and working spaces CMYK profiles. 
And it is this working space's CMYK profile that provides us with the on-the-fly conversion from the RGB values in our image to the CMYK values that would exist if and when the image is converted to CMYK. So Photoshop uses these two profiles working together to generate both the true RGB values in the image and the future CMYK values if we were to convert the image to CMYK, both of which can display simultaneously in our info panel.